Hello, and thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to show you how AIMSTORE can be utilized to achieve end-to-end -end information lifecycle management in just a few minutes using policies and data flow. This is the data flow screen, and we have the animation turned on. Um, what we've done here is created a data flow with several remote offices, central offices, and an archive. And you can see that the data, based on the policies, is going to all of these on an automated basis. Uh, this could be uh, data for disaster recovery, CDP, backup, replication, or archive. Uh, in addition, at each one of the repositories, we're enabling deduplication. Uh, you can also force controls for, uh, on the data for compliance. So there's a number of different things and different types of tools that you can apply within AIMSTORE. We're going to show you how to use those with uh, this one policy setup we'll do now. We're going to start by going over to the AIMSTORE policy definition screen. And here I'm going to create a single policy that will encapsulate several different business processes. First off, I'm going to classify the data. Lots of different ways to do that. You just drag and drop. We'll start with the path. We'll identify the finance user directory. And we'll apply the document tag to that. So all documents that meet these specifications within this path will uh, be hit by this particular policy. My next step is to deploy one of the operations. So I'm going to start with continuous data protection. This is going to provide instant restore capability at a local repository uh, within that site. It's going to be a one minute snapshot. Retention will be set for two hours. I also need to create a backup that will happen on a weekly basis for the HQ site. And that's going to have a five month retention cycle. Because these are finance documents, I'm also going to version them for compliance requirements. That'll be for seven years. And then for full chain of custody throughout the entire life cycle, from creation to eventual uh, expiration, we're going to assign track operation to that. And so for all the documents within this path, we're going to be able to track the creation, reads, accesses, etc. Anybody from any other groups who comes in and touches this or makes modification will not only uh, log the particular user, but the specific date and the actual change that occurred and archive that change, be it file or byte level. I'll go ahead and sa save this as finance docs. Now we'll go over to the data flow screen and apply it. To start off, I'm going to go ahead and grab my file server group, drag and drop that over to the workspace, bring in a data mover, and then I want to attach this to my local repository out there at the remote site. I also want to bring my backups to the HQ repository. Here it is. So I'll add that to the data flow. I also have some versions that I need to put into the corporate archive. I'll bring that in as well. Let's go ahead and attach the policy. Here we have the one we just created. See the red flag pop up until I have the data flow set, it'll remain there. CDPs will be going to the local repository for very fast restore capabilities. HQ will get the backups on a weekly basis. And the archive will get the versions. Red flag went away, you can see how the policy works. Now with the animation, CDPs, backup snapshots, and the versions. I can now go back to my policy definition screen and create a brand new policy that maybe does something else that I need to do. Because AIMSTORE is a unified toolkit, you're really only limited by your imagination in terms of how you'd like to use it. We'll do another policy here. This one, we'll specify the path first, be the, the general user directory, and I'll target the multimedia files that are out there. Say I'm a systems administrator and I want to block all of this stuff because we have way too much multimedia on the file shares. Well, anyone who wants to create, read, or what have you, any of the multimedia will now be blocked. There may be a problem though because the marketing group needs to have access to those multimedia files and also the ability to uh, uh, copy or, or, or create any of those kinds of files. So we'll exclude them from this policy. I'll save that policy as multimedia block. Then we'll go back to the data flow. 
identify the machine that we want to uh, peg with this policy, and there you have it. Save it, and we're done. What we've just shown you is something that's impossible to reproduce with any other application in the market today, or even a set of applications. You simply can't enjoin different types of capabilities to complete an entire business process. The metadata remains separate, the management of each of the individual point solutions remains separate, and so does the repository data. What we'd like to ask you to do at this point is take a look at our website and investigate some of the areas that are there to further enhance your understanding of the AIM store architecture, how we deduplicate across all the data sets and across all the repositories, and how our unified repository works. We're going to have other movies available on the website in the future, and there are also some animations within the website itself, so please feel free to take a look and call us for any questions you might have. Oh, and one more thing. AIMSTORE is currently available for download on our website with full functionality and a regenerating license. Thank you for taking time with us today. Goodbye now.